Okay, we're back with another episode. And oh, oh Steven, Steven shows, shows Maya, Maya movies. movies. We remember the title. <laughs> and this episode we're keeping with the Batman theme. Yes. And we're watching The Dark Knight. If we're you being rem- all dark and brooding. Yeah. If you remember the last episode, if you watched it, um we You watch it right now yeah, after this one. Go watch <laughs> it. <laughs> Steven brought up the Dark Knight a lot, I think. Yes. And I he did. told me how good it was, so yes. we decided to watch it next. Mm-hmm. Um Okay. So, what did you think? First things first, amazing. Definitely in the top three of my... I have two different lists for uh, films and movies that I like. One is favorites, and that's just ones that I enjoy watching. And the other is best films, ones that I think do cinematography, acting, directing, and like pretty much everything about the movie amazing. And it's number three. It was number one, but then Jojo Rabbit came out. Ooh, that's a good one. And then Oppenheimer came out. So damn, Oppenheimer really to... climbed the charts for you. <laughs> Number three. So mm. yes, I think it's very good. Yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed it. The most standout thing to me was Heath Ledger's performance because yes. I mostly just wanted, like, when we were watching it, I was like, no wait, I want more Heath Ledger <laughs> on the screen because he's so captivating. Like, yeah. I've never. This is the first time I've watched The Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know people were always like, Heath Ledger is the best Joker. Heath Ledger is the best Joker. Mm-hmm. And I, I've seen, like, other movies with the Joker, mostly, like... Joker well, 2019. Yeah, then, yeah, Joker. The but then I also saw in Suicide Squad, like, Jared Leto was Joker. <laughs> no. So I've seen, like, <laughs> only two performances of Joker. And I think Joaquin Phoenix did a good job. They did a very good job for that kind of Joker. Yeah. Which but, is one thing I want to talk about, but keep going. Okay, but, um, like, I understand the hype around Heath Ledger's performance because it was really good. Mm-hmm. Like... I just, I can't explain, like, he was creepy, <laughs> and he was, like, a good, like, he was, like, menacing, but, like, joke, like, I don't even know how he did it. It was so good. It was somehow scary, but charismatic, you know, like, well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, like, I couldn't, like, stop watching his, when he was on screen, I was, like, comp- like, he, he was a star of the show for me, yes. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. He was really good. I, I want, like, more, but he's dead. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. So, rest in peace. He, that's so sad because he was such a, he did such a good job. Yeah, he died after, like, wrapping of filming for this film. I did hear that, like, he, like, kind of made himself go insane for the role to, yeah. like, get in character. Yeah. Um, also, I've heard, like, Joaquin Phoenix kind of did, like, a lot of extreme things. And I, think I think Jared Leto did as were, well. were, like, uh, into method acting to an extent for Heath Ledger. Joaquin Phoenix, well, he's just... A very different kind of actor in general. Yeah. And Jared Leto is literally insane. And he's just not good as, like, in anything. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> but uh, what was I talking about? You want to talk about Joaquin Phoenix's joke? Like, oh, the yes. differences. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, his joker is very different from the Dark Knight Joker, mm. which is very clear. But the thing is, like, with those Heath Ledger's and Joaquin Phoenix, they're both really good for, for different reasons. Yeah. One goes into, like, the mental and the psychic, like, the brain, essentially, which is Joaquin Phoenix. And it's like, oh, what about, like, mental disorder? How does this affect someone? What will they do to get what they want and whatnot? Where Heath Ledger is, he knows that he's good at what he does. And what he does is just bring chaos to wherever he goes and knows how to get that done yeah i did like i will say a lot of the things that happened that the joker did i'm like because he he said in the movie like oh there's schemers i'm not a schemer i'm just yeah, chaos I don't have plans and i'm like that is so not true because how the <laughs> hell like like you have to like you have to sew a phone into a guy with a bomb in it yeah. like you that is planning <laughs> sir i don't know what you're talking about or well like, he's also a pathological liar so <laughs> that's true he did lie a bunch like i genuinely believed him the first time he's like i don't know how i got these scars i was like oh man <laughs> that's that actually makes like sense. one reason why you're like oh yeah this guy doesn't tell the truth at all yeah he, and then he lied he probably would have said something different at the very end when he was yeah when he was talking about batman yeah he's like you want to know how i got these scars i know but i know how you got these yeah so he is a liar but I just thought that was funny because I was like, you know, like the time it takes to like blow up a hospital, you have to like plant all that stuff. Yeah. Like you have mm-hmm. to like, like get all these guys onto your side and like manipulate them to do what you want. Like there's a lot mm-hmm. of planning that goes involved mm-hmm. that was involved in all the Joker's <laughs> things that he did. But I think he, he just doesn't have an end goal. He just wants to create chaos. I guess that's the difference between yeah. him and the mob. Yeah. I mean, like the very obvious goal that he had was to 
turn the very good into very bad. Which like he, he did succeeded. With Harvey Dent. Yeah, he was able to do that. But his overall goal is to just make the city go insane, which kind of happens in the next one. I kind of like would go insane. I. If you lived in Gotham. Yeah, that place is horrible. <laughs> oh, that's another thing I wanted to touch upon. Gotham, the people are like crazy. Yeah. There. Why would you, like, I don't understand why people continue to live in that city if the crime <laughs> is so bad. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you, why would you live there with your family if, like, there's, tra- like, the mobs running the place, there's, like, like, villains everywhere. Yeah, the mob, like, the mob people are literally having, like, lunch or whatever in our normal restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> they're not, like, in secret. Everybody knows they're in the mob. Yeah. And it's also, like, like, I know in the Batman universe, there's, like, all like there's like the riddler there's like the joker there's harley quinn there's Mm -hmm. two face Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh there's um (laughs) all frick i'm trying to remember all the other ones but i can't remember all of these villains yeah all the villains that are (laughs) roaming the streets of gotham and everyone's just like all right like which is touched upon in the lego batman movie where like no one goes actually to jail yeah everyone just like gets (laughs) re-released yeah (laughs) um so that that was something that i was confused about why everybody like was so chill about it but then they were also psychotic because they're trying to kill people yeah um but yeah that didn't make sense to me but the i guess one wayne in, uh, uh, disbelief. enterprises guy he's trying to blackmail bruce wayne for being batman oh yeah even though he's actually batman that was a really funny scene actually. i like how uh lucius fox morgan freeman's character just says exactly what bruce wayne is and he's like yeah you are crazy yeah he's like you're gonna like (laughs) you're gonna black man the guy you think is a vigilante with all this technology who (laughs) eats people with his bare fists you want to blackmail him good luck with that and then the guy like visibly was just like right uh good point (laughs) another like nitpick about the film that i had while watching it was i was very confused with the level of technology that was in the movie because okay batman has access to like all this high tech and i know he's like a billionaire and he has access to like r&d and like funds and the military grade equipment and stuff yeah but like he when he was stealing who was he who was he stealing oh um the Ch- uh, the chinese businessman i forget his name lao lao he lao, was yeah. stealing lao from his tower yep and he like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he like puts a balloon in the air and that is like attached to a grappling hook and then a plane flies by and just go and yeah they just like <laughs> float up i'm like that is just not possible that's just like, with um, how it was shown, it would literally rip them in half. Yeah. However, there's the physics mind going at it. Uh-huh. If there is, like, a uh, like spring within that giant uh, string or whatever it is uh-huh. that they have, and it, like, stretches as they get pulled, it can reduce the amount of forces on the person and the people being dragged from the balloon. So, like, you have the balloon up here. You have the people down here. It gets caught. It extends. So that oh, is like this little so bit of drag. So it reduces like the speed. It reduces the amount of G forces on the people. But it's not shown like that in the movie at all. They just get whoop. <laughs> so theoretically, it is possible, but you need really good tech for that. Yes. But then, okay, so <laughs> this t- this tech supposedly exists. But then, like when Two Face or when uh, Harvey Dent is in the hospital, they don't even patch up his face with skin grafts or anything. To be fair, it was like one day after the thing happened. No, but that's exactly when you would do it as oh, soon as possible. I don't know. Like how you would these just leave work. his flesh hanging <laughs> up like that. Like, you would put the skin grafts. Like there's plastic surgery. Like that man does not need to have his face exposed. Also, <laughs> that bacteria. Like infe- he's gonna get infected. Well, he got infected in a different way. Yeah, he got infected with evil, but yes. <laughs> he's going to get, like, an infection, and he's going to die. Like, he's well, not living long. Well, he wasn't living long anyway, so... That's true. I guess he died. But I feel like he didn't actually die, and he's going to come back. No, he died. Oh. He okay. fell off a giant story building. Story building? Yeah, but I feel like, you know, they always die, but then the Joker's going to, like, pull him away. I mean, the Joker was captured, but, like, you know. <laughs> there's always going to be some sort of, like... Yeah. I guess they showed him dead, but... Yeah. Okay, so I guess he's dead, but... <laughs> yeah. Alright, no. one thing with Christopher Nolan. He makes people die, and they don't come back. Besides oh. Jim Gordon, but that was on purpose. Who was Jim Gordon? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, he did that intentionally, right? Yeah. I'm assuming he had a bulletproof vest, yeah. and he pretended to be dead. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Because that was their plan. But the Joker had a plan for the plan that they had the plan for. Do you think Joker knew, or he's just, just like, he made a backup plan in case that happened? 
Uh, he probably has plans on plans on plans on plans on plans on plans on plans. Interesting for someone who says he's not a schemer. He has a lot of schemes. He's a liar. That's true. But yeah, that's that was. I was like, are you serious? Like they couldn't fix this guy's face a little bit. Well, if they did, he wouldn't be two faced. Yeah, I know, but like, it, okay, they could have at least like they could make it like grotesque looking with skin grafts. <laughs> like they didn't need to, like that poor man, that eyeball is so dried out. There is no blinking <laughs> happening. Like that is just like not. And when he had that drink of whatever. I know that got a burn because his skin <laughs> is literally open, and that's out straight up alcohol. But um, yeah. So that's my gripe. I feel like there's like an inconsistency with the technology, and also like I hated the way that they did the sonar. Like, uh, yeah. like, I feel like when they it's showed very, it through his yes. eyes, it was very disorienting. Yeah. Like, I was like, I don't know, like, everything's moving too fast to focus. <laughs> but also, like, the screen that Morgan Freeman was, like, looking at. Like, why did it have to be separated? <laughs> that made no sense. Just put it all on one screen. I don't know. Like. I have an idea. The movie, movie explanation makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, those are my gripes. But I did like, I liked the movie. It was entertaining. It was enjoyable. Also, one thing about this movie there's no, like, long credit intro scene, you know, or sometimes, like... Oh, right, yeah. Like, they have, like, starring this guy, starring this guy, and they kind of, like, float through the environment. It just starts yep. in the middle of a heist, and mm-hmm. you're kind of like, oh, shit. Like, for <laughs> me, I was like, wait, I'm not used to, like, the movies just starting right away. Like, what the hell? It's time for the movie. So that was a war. That's a warning. Just remember, the movie starts, like, instantly. That's a warning? Yeah. But, I, I mean, I like that. It's kind of, like, a mm-hmm. nice change of pace. Mm-hmm. Like, for this movie, I think it works best because the Joker's it's all about chaos me. and, like, we need to do things quickly and now. Yeah. And so it's just starting the movie off immediately. It works. True. I guess the only other Batman movie I've seen is Lego Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, like, seen the other Batmans. I, I, did, I did not really like Christopher Nolan's voice. No, not Christopher Nolan. <laughs> Christian Bale. Christian Bale. I did not like Christian Bale's... Oh, yes. Like... Mr. I'm out of breath all of the time! Batman voice. I I get, like, he's trying to disguise his voice. Well, he's already disguised with the whole cowl thing. But also, like... I feel like there's, like... You can get, like, a voice changer. You don't need to strain your vocal cords like that. (laughs) Like, the technology. Like, you have the sonar technology. Like, just do a voice changer. You have the technology! And then also, another thing in the first like, scene that we see his suit, it looks super dumb. Like, it looks really dorky, because, like, his neck doesn't move. The reason why it's like that is because it's from Batman Begins, and that's the suit that he wears that entire movie. Yeah, I just and thought it was kind of And it's very reminiscent silly. of uh, Batman 1989 with Michael Heaton, where he couldn't, it was, like, just a whole plastic thing over his yeah. head, and he couldn't, he had to turn his whole body to look around. Yeah, see, that makes no sense <laughs> for fighting or anything, because I feel like peripheral or, like, even just, like, moving your neck... Yeah. To dodge a punch is, like, <laughs> Being able pretty... to do things is good. I guess, like, I guess if you were punched, it would hit, like, a plastic shell, so it would probably hurt the other person more than him. But yeah. anyway, it doesn't but, make sense logistically. But then suit afterwards... Is an improvement. So much better. Yeah, it looks, it looks way better. The first suit looks dorky, and then the second one looks, like, good. <laughs> an actual suit to use against people. Yeah, in my opinion. But... Uh, do you have anything else you want to add before we jump into reviews? Yes. So, remember the truck flipping in the street of wherever they were? The one with Joker in it? Yeah. 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 That's all real. Oh, really? Uh-huh. That's super cool. <laughs> it's great. Christopher Nolan for it. He does. He likes Wanna practical. do everything effects. practical. Uh, what else? Oh, the hospital blowing up. That's also practical as well, except for the top two levels. Uh, they were supposed to have glass panels in it, but someone or like a group of people stole those glass panels So only the lower level had the actual glass panels and they had CGI in the other ones Who would steal glass panels? What I do don't you, know like, <laughs> What the heck? Wait, so they actually blew up a hospital or is well, it was it like a little miniature that they blew up? Uh, I think it was like they had like some sort of building constructed and then they just like blew it up I wonder, like... Because Heath Ledger actually did, like, walk into that area and, like, press the button and mess with it. It was like, oh, my goodness, exploding. And then got onto the bus. And uh, on that bus, if you look closely, you can see, a, like, a camera person with someone else. You can see the camera because there's another shot where we see the Joker on the bus just staring straight ahead 
not looking at the explosion, which would be interesting to keep in because you're like, you know, an explosion is like this big spectacle spectacle that people will look at and be like, whoa, what's going on? But he kept like staring Kevin. straight and it's like, well, that, no, don't care. I'm on a mission. Yeah. So that'd be interesting to have in the movie, but they didn't go for it. Wow. So they actually built a building to explode it? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I wonder, like, if, like, people are just walking by, they see this building under construction, and then it just explodes, and they have no idea why. I or it was, like, a rundown building that I wasn't like used anymore. That happened. I remember in the news, there was something where they were like, oh, my God, there's a police, like, there's, like, a, like, there's, like, an explosion, there's all these overturned cars, and then they're like, oh, wait, it's a movie set. <laughs> Or, like, a plane crashed in, like, the highway or something. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, a plane crashed. But it was just, like, for a movie. Mm-hmm. I feel like that is something that would happen. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Yeah. It's time for reviews now. Time for reviews. It's review time. Okay. Time so, for reviews. Um, this movie received a 4.5 on Letterboxd. That's pretty good. Which is pretty high. It's definitely on the higher end. I think I gave it a 5. You did. A lot of my friends that watched it gave it, like, higher ratings then five? Oh, you just mean like in general yeah like they were like <laughs> most of them were like above three so that's pretty good should be above four and a half not all of them anyway i digress all right so let's get into reviews okay so the first review is a five star and says if you do not like this movie i do not like you agreed so there you go that was cinema clown ha 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 because joker is a clown And it's a movie, so it was in the cinema. Someone said, my friend said Heath was okay in this. So who wants to sign a petition to send her to the North Pole? (laughs) I will sign that petition because he was amazing. Like, I I was captivated by his performance. Yes. As I said in the Lego Batman review for Joker, when an actor, you can't see the actor, but just the character, the actor did a very good job. And Heath Ledger did that beautifully. He did. He did a really good job. Too bad he's dead. Yes. Um, someone said, crying the way Harvey screams Rachel is so funny every time. Rachel! Rachel! <laughs> I will say, it was like, when he turned evil, like, he started, like, yelling at things. And yeah. I'm like, That's, like, not intimidating at all. It's just kind of cringe. Someone said, say what you want about the Joker, but in this, he both sanitized his hands and wore a face mask. So I can definitely say he's more considerate than a lot of people. Yep, he was ahead of the times. He was. Even though he wanted to destroy the times at the same time. Some, <laughs> some said, I'm legally obligated to give this a good rating because I'm a man. Yes, that's how that works. Is that true? Yep, I'm a man, and I give a five. So therefore, it's true. It's true, I suppose. Someone said, the key to making a good Batman film is homoeroticism. I guess they're talking about between Joker and the Batman. <laughs> I don't know who they're referring to. I think the Joker and Batman. I would think, yes. You complete me. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> what it is. Oh my god, someone said that five second of Cillian Murphy's appearance. Cillian Murphy. Greater, yeah. greater, greater. <laughs> they love it. I will see Cillian Murphy as Oppenheimer from now on. Cillian Murphy. Cillian Murphy. Not Cillian. Sorry, sorry. He's not Cecilian. Sorry. This review makes no sense. What if there was no Joker and the hospital just did that? What, what the does hospital that mean? Thirst exploded? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? What is this person talking about? Someone said, how did Heath even do that? What the fuck? I don't know. I agree. He, he just, just did. He was so good. He was. So... Someone said, everyone in this movie is hot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they got the point of the movie, but all right. Uh, someone said... It's kind of embarrassing anyone else even tried after this. Being Joker? Yeah. I or guess. like making a Batman or movie? Like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe both. Oh, someone said Marvel could never. And I consider myself a big Marvel fan. Comic slash superhero movies ranked 10 out of 10. Yep, Marvel could never make The Dark Knight. Interestingly, Iron Man came out the same year. And do you like Dark Knight more than Iron Man? Yeah. Although they're, like, two very different kinds of liking. Yeah, they like are. Like, Iron Man is a fun movie to watch that started off uh, the MCU, and then The Dark Knight is not only a good superhero movie or comic book movie, but it's just a good movie. Yeah, it is pretty good. Oh, yeah, no, I did want to mention, I will say the fighting could have been better. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I thought 
It felt very stagnant. Yeah, like, there wasn't much, like... Like, I feel like they kind of choreo- choreographed something more, like, explosive or, like, something more... Not, like, literally explosive, but, like, <laughs> Boom, more exciting point. to watch. Like, I don't know. I feel like... Like, I did see a review saying, like, some guy... Like, an, I guess, like, one of the villains literally, like, just fell, fell down, down without <laughs> even being touched. And I guess you can see it in the movie, like, if you slow it down enough. Yeah, there's one moment where they're Batman's fighting someone, and, like... He hits someone with a thing, and then he fights someone else, and he goes back to the other guy and just, like, throws the gun down, which I think he was supposed to, like, hit him again, but he just wasn't there. (laughs) It's like, okay. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like a lot of, like, the action was literally Batman, like, punching them once, and then they're just crumpling. Boom, bah, boom, So it wasn't, like, very exciting to watch the fighting part. The best parts was, like, Heath Ledger and Batman interacting. Yeah. Mostly Heath Ledger just being on screen. Yep. So, someone says, interesting, someone says, before Barbie and Oppenheimer were on the same day of July 21st, 2023, known as Barbenheimer, there was July 18th, 2008. The Dark Knight and Mamma Mia were both released on the same day. Wow. I like to call it the Dark Mama. History dark repeats Mama. Itself. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that would be funny if it is. I oh, think yeah. the Dark Knight won that. Someone said... One of those incredibly rare cases where one actor's performance transcends the film itself. I've only watched this movie once, like, five years ago, and s- still I recall almost every line of Ledger's dialogue. That really <laughs> says something about the impact that one man had on the film. And if you have any doubts about Heath Ledger's performance defining this movie, take a look at the poster in the top right corner. No dark night to be found. I can't help but dream about what the third installment would have been if Ledger were in it. That's true, like... The poster for the movie has the Joker. Yeah, there are many different ones, but that's like the most notable one. Wow. Joker. I like want to watch just more of the Joker. Like, and it's so <laughs> sad. I can't believe he's dead. Yeah. I'm really sad. Yeah. About that. Damn. Although I feel if he were in the Dark Knight Rises, well, I mean, that whole story would, would have been very different if he were to be in it. But if... I don't know if you can, like, beat what he did in this. True. Okay, this is a bit of a long review, but I'm going to say it because it's interesting. Okay. So vulgar... Oh. What? Okay, this was a four and a half rating, so they liked it. Okay. Okay. So vulgar, obvious, brutal, awesome, stupid, awesome, embarrassing, awesome, etc. Every every theme in this movie is jammed into your mouth like a knife. It's beyond ham-fisted. Moving into this territory of just pure Chris Nolan grittiness. The Joker isn't a character, he's an agent of chaos. But no one else is a character either. Every person in this movie is reduced to an agent of what have you. It's just human-shaped themes running around throwing each other off buildings. <laughs> Big, scary-looking inmate saves the fairies just because the moral of the story needs him to. Rachel dies as a plot contrivance with no emotion ever shown about it besides the male lead yelling her name gruffly during an act of vengeance. Rachel! Rachel! Batman kills four dogs. Heath Ledger's performance has obviously been beaten to death, but it's so fucking good. I can't believe how well it still holds up. It's so impressive. Especially considering his roles before this, it really deserves the mythic reputation it's earned. One of my only complaints is that they use CGI for Two-Face. Why not just go practical? That dumbass 3D eyeball looked dated the second it hit theaters. Okay, first off, there were practical effects on his face, so that they didn't have to do total CGI. But also, how would you do a practical, like, actual... But eyeball that's like about to fall out. I don't know. Without I mean, it, it could looking, probably be done now, but without it looking maybe, like just a little like, like, like whatever, thing. yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? You'll yeah, figure I, it out, listeners. Yeah. True. True. Oh, Hans Zimmer did the score. Hans Zimmer did do the score. It's pretty good. I don't really remember the music. But I guess I was really absorbed in the film, so I didn't really, like, notice the soundtrack. That's usually how I watch films. I don't really notice the score until the second time around. Because, like, the first time you're just feeling it and experiencing it. That's true. Because a good score is you don't notice it, you feel it. Good point, good point. Okay, someone said that some men just want to watch the world burn. I simply can't give this film five stars because Christopher Nolan, my beloved, needs to fix his exposition problem. Exposition problem? Do you know what that means? Oh, there's like a point in the film where like everything is just said about what the film is. Like what's going on. Is that like a thing of Christopher Nolan? He tends to do that, but 
I think it works. <laughs> Maybe you're blinded because you're a man. <laughs> I don't think that's the reason. <laughs> Someone said, Christopher Nolan really gave us Christian Bale, Heath Ledger, and Cillian, Killian Murphy in the same movie. He did. True. True. Just wait until Oppenheimer. That guy's mind's going to explode. Oh, someone said, probably the movie that made me realize that super cool fights aren't the most compelling part of a superhero film. That this too. This film molded my filmmaking style, and I hope to create something at least as half as good as this. Yeah. But the fight scenes are second to the actual story itself. Because with Marvel, most of the fight scenes are like the big, grandiose That's things that you're like, whoa, look at that. And then the story's like, uh, bad guy needs to punch. That's true. That's Whereas a good this point. one, it's moral dilemma. What? Yeah, it was pretty good. Oh, someone said, man, the Joker makes Batman look so boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of true. Yeah. Batman went, <laughs> Someone said, hmm? Someone asked what we need to do to lower crime rates, and Bruce Wayne went, a cape and ASMR. <laughs> I'm Batman. True. Oh, someone said watching this in, in a theater was absolutely incredible and beautiful. <laughs> it was, even though I don't really remember. Although, apparently, I had to go to the bathroom all by myself because my dad didn't want to go because in case someone came up and had to sit in the seat that I was, then that would be bad. Or we were because assigned seating wasn't a thing back then. I was eight. I miss when assigned seating wasn't a thing in theaters. You just walk in. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, it was so much more... There was just no, like, reservation fee, online booking fee. You just go, sit, and watch. Yeah, you go up, say, two tickets for this thing. And then you go and sit down. Very nice. Yeah. So nice. Someone, said, <laughs> someone said, Batman did not hesitate for one second to smack those dogs. But, like, yeah, I would have done the same thing. But, <laughs> damn, what else was he supposed to do? <laughs> Just let them, like, bite them a bunch? No. Yeah, those dogs wouldn't have stopped. Also, he threw them into a net, so. Did he? I yeah. thought he threw them down the shaft. Like, yeah, but there was a net there. Oh, so he didn't kill them. That's exactly. Sick. Other person reviewing. He doesn't kill. Besides that first dog, yeah, he threw that one off a cliff. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> he didn't kill something. Also, that uh, garbage truck driver, <laughs> he was crushed. Oh, that's sad. He did kill someone then. Okay, this is the last review. Heath Ledger, that's all I have to say. Yep. And I understand that. It's a good review. Is everything that you That concludes say. the review section. No more reviews, but now it's time for fun facts. Facts that are fun, fun facts. This was the first comic book movie to reach one billion dollars worldwide. That's pretty good. Billion? Yeah. With a B for Batman. The bus crashing backwards into the bank was much harder to pull off than was anticipated. The bus had to be taken apart and reassembled inside the building, concealed behind a large false wall, and then propelled backwards with an air cannon. Heath Ledger constantly licked licking his lips was due to the prost prosthetic coming off whenever he spoke, but it just became a tick of the character. Yeah, Even I think going, it fits really well. Like a lizard. It fits. While filming the chase scene with the Joker and SWAT vans, one of only four IMAX cameras in the world at the time was destroyed. <laughs> oh no. Oh, Christopher Nolan destroying IMAX cameras since 2008. <laughs> I feel like he likes he likes explosions. He likes like he likes destroying practical things. stuff. He likes making practical things explode. He likes saying a lot of words so that people understand what's going on. <laughs> he does. But it's all good. Uh, Christopher Nolan and his co-writers Jonathan Nolan and David S. Goyer made a Christopher Nolan and his co-writers, Jonathan Nolan and David S. Goyer, made the decision very early on not to explore the Joker's origins. This was so the character could be presented as an absolute, whatever that means. Maybe like an absolute mystery? I guess so. That's pretty cool. I guess, I mean, that, that I feel like that's what allowed Joker, new Joker, to be made. Like, we had no idea about his backstory, so it could be anything. Yep. Yep. According to Christopher Nolan, Bruce Wait, Wayne. Do you think that the Joker movie makes sense? Like, do you like that origin story for Joker? 
For that kind of Joker, yes. But not for Heath Ledger's Joker. You don't think, like, that would make sense for him? No. Why not? Why not? Why not? Well, with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, it's more in the sense of wanting to be seen rather than wanting to destroy an entire uh, society. And Joker's ability to, in Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, is wanting to have people rise up so that they can have this sense of power that they didn't have before. Whereas Heath Ledger's Joker is more about showing that there are a loose sense of differences in everyone's mind and everyone's beliefs and opinions and everyone can have this differencing difference in judgment that allows them to do things that aren't as good as one would hope did that make sense yeah i wish i could argue with you but i don't really remember the joker plot <laughs> that well because i watched it a while ago so i can't argue you well the joker 2019 was very much, you would just step right over me if I was laying down on the ground in the street. And you know you would. Because, like, most of the time in that movie, he was just, everyone didn't give him abused. the time of day. Yeah, he was being. But couldn't he have turned into, like, with time, he got more and more crazy and then just wanted to, like, sit, watch the world burn? I mean, possibly, but, I, like, from what we've seen from that version of the Joker... As of right now, I don't think so. Interesting. But there's too big of a gap to like be like, yes or no. It's, uh... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have to rewatch Joker to see if I agree with you. <laughs> According to Christopher Nolan, Bruce Wayne's reasons for needing new bat suit to be faster and more agile, as you mentioned were in fact the real reasons why Christopher Nolan wanted the Batsuit to be redesigned for the movie. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Who can fight or walk if you can't even turn your neck? <laughs> yeah, it's just, like, horrible. Like, the neck is very important for balance and stuff. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. The, like, grovelly growl-type voice for Batman was in entirely Christian Bale's fault or responsibility? Not responsibility. What's the right word? fault because the real voice during filming was more toned down but then heightened to be more annoying <laughs> uh, damn they shouldn't have done that yeah i mean they didn't he didn't like speak like that way that much in the movie so it's like acceptable it's just like a mild nuisance but it doesn't ruin anything it's just like he does he really have to talk like that type of thing <laughs> yeah it's a bit annoying well i will say of the two batman movies that i've seen i think i prefer lego batman because <laughs> it's like just really funny and it does like mock batman because i think batman is kind of like a cocky mofo in a way yeah the lego batman movie is just more fun it is more fun and it pokes fun at batman i think which is funny to me i did like this movie it was very it was entertaining but apparently the other ones are forgettables right or uh what, like Thor, the Dark Knight trilogy? Or well, the what first you one you said I didn't need to watch. Oh, Batman Begins? Yeah. And then what's the next one? Dark Knight Dark Rises. Dark Knight Rises, yeah. Is that like a good one? It's not as good as this one. There's Batman no Begins is not as good as this one. There's no Heath Ledger. No. Do you think that the next movie was going to include Heath Ledger? It's possible. But, uh,. See, I don't know. If they did have Heath Ledger, uh, the Joker, in the next one, I think the movie would have been more interesting to watch. However, if they did have Heath Ledger in it with the Joker, I don't think it would have been as it would have been like the same incredible kind of... as The Dark Knight. Yeah. So. It's... But who was the villain in Dark Knight Rises? Bane. Bane. What the hell? Isn't that what? <laughs> Isn't that his last name? Oh, no, Wayne is his last name. <laughs> Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Who the hell's Bane? Bane is this, uh, like, very muscular and buff guy who talks like this. I am Bane. What's, is he, like, a millionaire or something? Like, what's his deal? No, I don't really know the backstory of him, but I do know that he is just this 
guy who likes to be like all tough and like punch a bunch of stuff and be like, I am a very strong man. What's his like goal? He wants to take over the city also? He's like very like just show that people are corrupt and if you show them there's a door or a way out, they'll run away. And uh, I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to The Dark Knight Rises. What did I just say? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, The Dark Knight Rises wasn't all that great, which is why I don't really know much about Bane. Oh, so like this could, well, you said this movie is kind of standalone, which I think I yes. agree with you because I didn't see the first one. I think the only thing that would have been explained better is why he liked Rachel so much. Yeah, that's the only thing that you would actually have any sense of. But you literally, you like, yeah. I think you told me they grew up together and I was like, all right. And yeah. then it made sense. So mm -hmm. it's not very important. Like you can kind of gather it, but... Yeah, I, I think it's a standalone. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I feel like the middle movie isn't always the best one in a trilogy. <laughs> like, it's usually not the best. Typically, it's the worst one. Or, like, almost the worst one. Yeah, like, the first one's usually the best. So, like... Yeah. That's funny that this one... Besides Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2 is amazing. Which? Tobey Maguire Spider-Man from, like, the 2000s. But then Spider-Man 3, just terrible. Do, did each of the Spider-Mans get three Spider-Man movies? No. Andrew Garfield didn't. Although, there was enough story in the second one for there to be a third one, but they decided to make it all in one movie, which made it awful. Even though I do enjoy that one the most. Oh. <laughs> Why do you enjoy it the most if it's the worst? Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, they're just fun to watch. Oh. They have great chemistry, so. She died. She did die. Spoiler. Oh, that's actually a spoiler. <laughs> it's been out for like, what, 10 years or whatever? Yeah, I know, but like... Oh, it's been out for 10 years? Wow, you're old. You're, we're the same age! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> anyway. Anything more to add about The Dark Knight? Mm, I think I said everything there was to say. Oh! Uh, the Joker's theme for this movie... And the Batman theme for this movie, they're like inverses of each other. Like one goes up and then crescendo's down or like whatever the correct musical term is. And the other one does the other thing. And it's oh, like, that's whoa! That's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. Do you like the Batman soundtrack? Like, is that like a worthy soundtrack? Yeah. Yes. Like, how does it, this one's... like, how does it rank on like Lord of the Rings status? Oh, that's tough. Because, you know. Or like Star Wars John status. Williams, Star Wars is amazing. Indiana Jones is also up there. Indiana Jones is pretty good. And then there's... Uh, I feel like Lord <laughs> of the Rings has the most amazing soundtrack. Lord of the Rings. You know, I don't really listen to the Lord of the Rings stuff. You should. I'll give it a listen. It's good. And then there's The Lion King, also done by Hans Zimmer, which is incredible. Oh, you did The Lion King? Yeah. The live action Lion King? All of them. What? I didn't know that. Yeah. He was employed by Disney? Yes, he was. <laughs> I don't know why. I feel like Disney has their own, like people like they don't like hire other people well he also did pirates of the caribbean oh pirates of the caribbean is good <laughs> although uh the person who did the well there's a ton of people actually working on the pirates of the caribbean score but there's one person who did the original the first one i forget the name of them but they're they're credited with having done damn that entire movie. that's like kind of a sick ass job like like scoring a soundtrack film. movie creator yeah soundtrack is technically the use of lyrical music like uh, uh what's the song oh like a uh, like toxic sure da, yeah da, 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 <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but like that would be considered soundtrack, oh, soundtrack. so they're whereas composers. score oh, is there's, there's score. the like instrumental instrumental type yes Mm -hmm. Yeah, Batman, like, those, like, big blockbuster movies don't have soundtracks. Typically, no, besides Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, because true. of the, uh, whatever it is, like, cassette tape. Like, Lord of the Rings did not have a soundtrack. No. It was a score. Yes. Star Wars did not have a soundtrack. No. That would be so wrong if that Star Wars had funny, a soundtrack. funny, though. <laughs> anyway, we went really off topic, but yeah. <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoy the new format. I, I'm really liking it a lot. Yeah, me too. Because it actually allows us to talk about the movie rather than talk yeah. about the movie. And I think also... If you understand what I mean. 
like the first one, I feel like I wasn't as confident in the in the format, but now I'm much more confident because I feel like if we watch good movies, there's like a lot of things to say. And if we watch, and bad if we watch movies, really bad movies, there's a lot, there's of, a things lot things of things to say. To say. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. Yeah. Bye. Bye.